Another story that we're watching this morning, Intel shares are moving higher after announcing plans to make its foundry business an independent unit with its own board and expanding its partnership with Amazon Web Services, which includes production of new AI chips. Here to break down the plans here with us, we've got Patrick Moorhead, who's the Moore Insights and Strategy Founder, CEO and Chief Analyst here. Patrick, always a pleasure to grab some time with you. I mean, this is a significant move here for Intel, a company that has gotten uh, billions of dollars in funding from the government, especially set aside as part of the CHIPS Act. With all this in mind, how does this recreate some of the ambitions at Intel that investors will have to kind of reprice as well? Yeah, listen, uh, short-term and long-term impacts here. Uh, the CapEx dial-down is more of an immediate impact uh, if you look at uh, the secure enclave deal with the Department of Defense, uh, that's shorter term. Uh, but I think the biggest and most important uh, uh, Intel news here was, was longer term. Uh, if you can get the number one cloud provider to do not just one, but two very custom type of chips for you, one in the foundry, and then one, a custom server chip, this pretends to a very good future. And you add AWS to a Microsoft who committed to Intel's uh, leading edge 18A process, this is a very positive view. And you know, while the foundry spin in, uh, the ink isn't uh, fully dry on that, it's not official. This is something that a lot of the customers who are sitting, uh, waiting, uh, and, and looking uh, to make a decision on Intel could be waiting for. And if it appears to be independent, I could see Apple, uh, AMD, uh, Broadcom, uh, and possibly even uh, Qualcomm sign up long-term. Patrick, when it comes to, uh, I, I guess, so then is it enough to kind of turn things around at Intel to win back that lost confidence or what else? Is it going to be additional partnerships that's going to then bolster that case? Yeah, so long-term, uh, this has reduced risk and should increase confidence for investors, uh, Intel long-term. Intel still has a collection of products and designs they need to execute flawlessly on. They also need to get through a successful reduction in force of between 15 and 20,000 people. And that's not easy, right? You have to change the way you work. They're not just selling off subsidiaries or selling off or exiting a business. They're taking layers out. And I believe that that could increase risk for uh, execution. Now it's recent new PC processor uh, that, that uh, uh, they brought out, which is focused on uh, AI and Copilot Plus notebooks. I was actually very surprised uh, at the first uh, numbers that came out. It appears it's much lower power and higher performance than I think anybody expected, but that's really good. I think the number one thing in Intel can do, and again, you know, I'm not going to say they chose the wrong data center AI architecture, uh, but they did pick a GPU that worked mostly in high performance computing and not necessarily the best for what's called low precision AI that, that NVIDIA and, and AMD are focused on. Now Intel does have a new data center AI GPU coming out in, in 2025 and it could make a mark in, in 26. Uh, but right now they, they have to, um, they have to do their best uh, it, with Xeon processors, but also their Gaudi uh, accelerator that uh, is comparatively to AMD and, and, uh, and NVIDIA small. It's about half a billion dollar uh, business uh, at this point, but just having those relationships is important. And what I really like about this custom chip for AWS is its co-development. Right, AWS is essentially saying, Intel, I see you as a partner. We want to do more. And probably the, the most interesting thing that, that, that came out of the AWS uh, uh, agreement for me was this very long-term commitment, upwards of five years 
on a foundry process that the company really hasn't said much about called 14A. Patrick, a lot to really continue to track with this Intel story going forward here. And we'll see how investors try to price this in the best they can. Patrick Moorhead, Moore's Insights and Strategy Founder, CEO and Chief Analyst. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.